Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul Chasu and welcome back to Endless Space 2, it's part 3 of my series and I did not actually do anything off camera for a change because firstly there, the previous two videos were recorded almost back to back there was some break in between them but not too much now I actually had a day's worth of a break so I'm coming into this fresh and with new ideas not yet hatched but let's think for a second and do what needs to be done. So first things first, what I know I need to do is to move my fleet to Geminos and then recon re what's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> Regroup with my up and coming fleet and then try to take back Ingress, which is still under threat. Additionally, I need to keep up some research. So when it comes to research, I know it's tempting to go ahead and research botanical scanning because it gives it the same effect that a Wapster would and uh, well it's much cheaper to make it's 280 industry additionally and i'll freely admit it's something i forgot when recording the last video it's you know i'm not perfect i'm sorry okay but i did forget oh i just knocked something off i'm sorry <laughs> like i said i'm not perfect but something i forgot about last time is that wapster is actually a unique improvement you cannot make more than one of those in anywhere also it's 500 industry not a thousand I'm sorry, I'm getting things mixed up because I'm also playing different versions of this game. It's something you need to keep in mind. I also have the access to the VIP version, which is different from this version. So things will be changed. Speaking of which, and it's something I need to actually mention just to remind you guys about it, is the fact that what you see right now is probably not exactly what you're gonna get when the game comes out. This build is a few days old already, which is, actually means a lot considering how frequently this game gets updates. So, things that I can't talk about are, you know, I can't tell you exactly what is going to change, but what I know for a fact, like, I can tell you generally what is going to change is the expansion. It's gonna be a bit easier to expand, because right now, in this version, it's a bit ridiculous. I can make two expansions and I'm basically locked because of my approval hit. It's going to be changed somewhat in the future version that you're gonna get most likely. It will be less ridiculous than it is now. On the other hand, the AI will be better and more smart. So, you know, keep in mind, everything you see here, subject to change. It's gonna be a recurring theme on my channel, which is why I'm considering making a mini-series which I will dedicate to just making updates whenever there comes a patch for Endless Space 2. So, a new major patch comes out for Endless Space 2 and I'll cover it in a video. I think this will be rather helpful for those of you who are looking for complete information about how the game evolves. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's focus on the research. I'm, like I said, I'm not going for this, have happiness. A single Webster would be good enough for now. I will probably need infinite supermarkets at some point, but I'm hoping I can skip them and just straight go straight into culture and shock. In fact, I'm thinking that once I start conquering the Cravers, I will no longer need to care or worry about the approval hit. That, but we'll see about that. I can also instead go for Wellbeing Foundation, but uh, considering the fact that the level system is bugged, I won't get much out of it, because my system is stuck at the lowest level. Speaking of which, that's another thing I need to cover. Some of you asked about the system development mechanic, and I can't really show it to you because, as you can see, it's bugged, unfortunately, so I can't show you exactly how it works, but what I can do is explain it somewhat. Basically, system development, it's like making an improvement that also levels up. It's like a mix, something between a hero and an improvement. And in here you design it. So let's say at level 1, I can design my system development plans to be made to use up the Eden Essence. Which would mean that once I level up my system once, it will cost me a certain amount of Eden Incense. Nothing else. It will not cost any industry. It will not take any time. It will be an instant thing. It will just require me to use up a certain amount of this resource that I'll delegate. It doesn't have to be Eden Incense. It can be whatever else luxury I uncover. And as soon as I do that, my system will start getting certain benefits. Like in this case, for example, plus 50 flat out influence by a 10, which is a humongous bonus, as you might imagine. Same goes for all the other uh, luxuries. I can instead use Dark Glitter. Why not? And on level 2, you can mix up two different luxury resources for different varied bonuses, and so on and so forth. And each time you want to level up your system development, you need to pay the uh, luxury cost again. But you only pay it one time to level, up thing, to level your system up. You don't need to repeatedly pay it. 
So that's how luxuries work nowadays. It's a bit different than last time, isn't it? So there's that. Okay, I hope you understood that explanation. Let's go back to research because I already... I need to make up my mind on what do I want to do first. So, I will gain access to Hyperion at some point, but right now I don't have access to it. And I have access to Titanium. 30 of it, which equals to 6 Sniper class ships, which would be rather useful, I believe, in my current situation. So let's go ahead and grab those, as well as an upgrade to my Kilo class ships, which is going to be rather useful. After that... I probably will need to have some extra speed bonus along for my ship so that I can reinforce faster because this is actually a really long distance to travel, I realized. So this will require some help and afterwards I probably will need to be able to invade the enemy. That would be rather helpful, wouldn't it? So let's get that. After that is done, who knows what I'll get. Probably the ability to extract Hyperion but I don't know about that just yet. It's too early to tell. So there's that done. Okay, anything else, anything else, anything else? I don't think there is anything else at this point in time. Let's go ahead and end my turn. Oh yeah, the elections. All right, Kaden. I'm going to go ahead and support the political party for the pacifists because I believe they can help me with the dust problem. In fact, I can check that real quick. Love, not war. Yeah, that's not useful. That's for when you are actually a pacifist, which I'm definitely not. Devil Bliss Bill is the worst for me right now because it would lower my approval instead of increasing it because my people currently hate me. And as for the Super Tax Act, oh yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing I need, but I need broad support for that. And I don't know if I'm gonna get it. Let's try, shall we? Yeah, no, I'm not getting a broad support. It's a minimal support at best. My people unfortunately don't really like pacifists, which is not a big surprise considering how much I've been pushing for the militarist party instead. The pacifists were simply the first ones to get enough support for a uh, place in the Senate. So there's that. Moderate support, that's better than I expected, but it's still not broad support. So there's that. Oh well. Let's proceed. I still cannot do anything in terms of laws, unfortunately. As a result, lost a cell phone somewhere and new heroes arrived. So quick look though, so your Eureka Act, I think I'll wait until I can gain the Eureka Act because that's something that's at least marginally useful for me, <coughs> I'm sorry, because it would allow me to actually make improvements faster which might equal to more, uh, what you might call it, dust later on. So anyway, a new hero arrives and what kind of hero will I get is a good question. So. Industrialists is probably the kind of party I want to support because their laws are cheaper and more... Uh, what's what I'm looking for? I don't know, better? <laughs> Just what out better. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I'm pretty sure the cheapest law you can gain from the Industrialists, which is actually really good, is a law that gives you extra approval for a few turns after you colonize a new planet, or after you conquer a new planet as well, which, as you might imagine, in my situation will be absolutely amazing. So I definitely do want the industrialists to take presence in my government, and so I need one of those two heroes. Which one though? Administrator or a culprit? Administrator... Uh, I don't remember him as being a very good admiral, to be entirely honest with you. So maybe a limo for a culprit? And let me remind myself what a culprit does as a base bonus. And uh, base bonus for a culprit is fleet health. I like fleet health, that's good enough for me. Okay, let's go ahead and grab him. And let's have a quick look at what other abilities he has, because I'll be frank, quite frank, I don't entirely remember that is 5 damage on ship and also where do we have extra health and shoot capacity. So I'm probably gonna go for the damage option because damage is awesome. And there is that. Alternatively I can make my ships level up faster, but right now this is this game is going to end at the 50-10 mark. So we want to get too much of a bonus from the Cosmic Castaway, even though it's good. Instead, let's go ahead and maximize the amount of damage I can deal out. So there is that. Now that I think about it, if I went for the other hero, uh, the what you call it, uh, was he called Administrator? I think he was. I'm pretty sure Administrators have a bonus to movement speed. And I could use that. Oh well, what's done is done. <laughs> I suppose, can I, do I have the balls to improve this guy's ship? Now it would cost me too much. He does have two weapons, so that's something. He still has a pretty awful ship, all things considered. It's gonna be not very useful in combat, but it will do something in combat, I suppose. So it's not gonna be the worst. Anyway, let's go ahead and have all of my fle uh, ships merged, nice and easy. Select all merge, add my hero to them. 
so that my hero starts gaining levels, which is gonna be rather important, I believe. It also increases my dust expenditure, which is less than ideal, but I suppose some things are unavoidable. You just say you can sell... I don't, don't want to sell public private partnerships just yet. I'll still not bankrupt just yet. And I'd like to stay that way for a little bit longer because I need the extra science. I really do. So I'm gonna keep the public private partnerships for a little bit longer. Let's wait one turn for the, another ship to be made. And I'm gonna go ahead and end my turn. By the way, I'm kind of guarding my system, which is the circle that you can see around my system. It works very differently to the way it worked in Endless Space 1. In Endless Space 1, guarding the system meant that no ships can leave the system. You can arrive at the system, but you cannot leave it. Additionally, no actions can be taken within that system other than fighting a fleet that is guarding the system. Right now it's different. This, right now all that guarding does is it slows down the enemy for one turn. And that's it. Once the ship arrives, it can do whatever. It can leave the place, it can colonize a planet over here, assuming there, is, there isn't a colony of mine in there already. So it's very, very different. I actually like the system from Endless Space 1 better, if I have to be entirely honest, but hey, that's my personal opinion. Anyway, now my fleet should be basically ready. I have five ships. They're somewhat upgraded. I have one magnet, which I'm curious to see how well it performs. It's uh, hard to say already. So we'll see that. And I have a bunch of ships and a hero leading them. The enemy has six ships, so the same amount of as I do, but they're damaged and they don't have a hero. I think I should be able to crush them. So let's go ahead and crush them. Let's get my on my way on my way, shall we? Also, I'm not only losing 40 dust per turn instead of whatever Angolian amount was, was losing before. Why? Am I losing this less dust now? I don't know, maybe because my overpopulation went away. Yes! Okay, so somebody died on my home planet. Yay! Death occurred! But which is actually seriously a good thing, of which considered which is amusing. In fact, I tended to destroy drone works, so this guy grows slower. Nah, he's still gonna grow too fast. Because the current stock, he only needs 10 more stock, and I can lower it by 5, so he'll still grow the next 10. Which is... But the amusing thing is, by losing this population, I was actually able to benefit my empire. So I need to think more about starving your population. And just killing off my population, which is actually a fun mechanic. But I I know, I'm evil. But I'm really being honest right now. This look at the, how much dust I'm saying, because one guy died. Okay, one pop represents probably like, I don't know, billions of people. But who cares about billions when you can save some dust, right? Anyway, as for my lonely system, which is trying to make a craver, which is ridiculous, I don't want a craver here. What do I want to make in here? Uh, start working on predictive logistics, because hey, why not? It's not like you're gonna be useful for anything else. So you might as well at least give me some industry, because hey, why not? The real reason why I have the system is so that I can colonize the Hyperion planet, wherever the balls it is. Where did it go? Where is the Hyperion? Oh, there we go, that's this one. It's the Atom planet, which I don't even have the technology for yet. Yeah, I don't think I'll be harvesting Hyper in this game, somewhat. Something makes me think that I want. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue being on my way towards the enemy. And my hero load up as well, which is nice. Let's give him, I can't give him more dust. So I'll just give him more influence, which is going to be useful when doing nothing. I don't know what I'll do with this influence. Right now, I still cannot, you know, enact the most powerful law. But later on in the game, you find out that you have more influence than you know what to deal with. So, personally, I think that the influence economy also needs to be reworked. Which is why, you know, this game goes into early access. Not only Alpha is Alpha, but also Alpha gives values, uh, various valuable information for the developers. So they can fine-tune things like, for example, the amount of influence you can gain. Also, now this planet is content. Why are you content? I mean, it's still like I can complain. Okay, now, no, this guy... Now, this planet was content, but this planet is now unhappy again. And this population is going to starve slowly but surely. This is really amusing. In fact, can I make it start faster? I really want to. It's... Okay, I didn't lower the production of my webster, which is what I was worried about for a second. But I also didn't make this population starve faster. Oh well. I guess they'll stay alive now. It was worth a try. <laughs> I'm so evil, I love it. Anyway, depleted Azulus will be done in one turn. In the meantime, I might as well improve Gen Genimals. Genimals was actually a real awkward name to pronounce, now that I think about it. And Ingress is working on some stuff that is kind of meaningless. I'm losing a ton of dust per turn. Next turn, Webster comes online, which is going to be nice. 
And that's gonna be that. And uh, where did the enemy go? Actually, stop, stop, stop at the banner system. Wait, I said stop at the banner system. Uh, oh no, never mind. My, my ships run out of movement. For a second, I thought I have more movement than I actually do. Okay, then, yeah. Let's stop at the banner system and attack that because Ingress is apparently no longer the threat, which I approve of. Apparently, Cravers know what's up. By the way, I'm curious what the score is. Okay, I'm losing. That was to be expected, though I didn't actually attack the enemy yet. And I was stuck in an unhappy situation for a long time. And my stat was anything but ideal. But soon enough, we'll pull ahead. Don't worry about that. So there is that done. Let me think. Genimos needs more. It's so tempting to click on the Webster icon, but this would be completely meaningless and pointless. So instead, let us colonize a new planet real quick. Which is going to lower my approval somewhat. But those guys are already unhappy anyway. Oh wait, that's right, they are unhappy. They are unhappy, that's a problem. Because now, even though I will finish my weapons on this planet, the other planet will remain unhappy. So I have some pretty big problems actually as a result of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they are unhappy already anyway. And I cannot increase their happiness, I can increase the Empire happiness. But if I con as a new planet with the system, will that be a big problem? So I will lose extra 5, but I wouldn't lose the 2.6. So, okay, I would still be above Rebellion. The system would just stay unhappy. And this system would become content. And Ingress would still be unhappy. So I would still be in an unhappy state. What if I starve my people? Can I even achieve that? I'm currently growing by 5 foot per 10. If I starve myself... Sell this, first of all, and gain a lot of da uh, a lot of dance as a result. Now I am starving myself ever so slightly, which is going to increase the system's happiness back to happy. And I will lower it back to unhappy by making a colony, which would be bad. So it does not make a colony instead, is what I'm thinking I would do. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my course of action. Starve myself <laughs> as a way of boosting economy. I know radical faking, right? But hey, it's I call it faking outside of the box. Thank you very much. In the meantime, I will need to improve my happiness. But I'm still at, I need three more techs until I can actually gain access to the personal fields. <sighs> I really hate this. No, I need survivor suits, but I need botanical scanning as oh, I hate this so much. I was hoping I would be able to avoid it. Apparently, I'm not. Makes me sad and empty inside. I could go for. Hmm, that would be a much better thing to grab, actually. The university, because first of all, it's access support for another ideological party, which actually is the same party. Now that I think about it, yep, it is. But secondly, it gives me a lot of extra bonuses on my second system and extra approval as well. Sure, I can only make it in one system, but the bonuses are well, well, well worth the price. So let's grab that. And as for the invasion, yeah, let's ignore Xenobotany for now. Then invasion. Then Xenobotany for extra movement speed. I'm jumping all over the place in terms of research. Meanwhile, as for the ships, first of all, let us upgrade the accelerator, shall we? So, if I were to put any weapon on this slot, as you can see, it would cost me the extra titanium. Like so. Which I don't really want to spare. My titanium is for my sniper ships exclusively at this point in time. So, what I'm going to do instead is leave this place empty. This ship is still gonna pull its weight in fine, I believe. Instead, what I can do is give it a little bit more armor so that it can be defendable somewhat, and I can also give it extra engine. In fact, I can give it. No, that's not the upgrade I was thinking about. So, extra engine, how much is that? That's 30 in the street, that's quite a bit, but I need the extra speed quite badly as well. So, let's just stick with this particular design, apply it, and as for the big ship, edit it slightly, and let's see what I can do with that. Yes, that's the default setup, and as I can see, yeah, it's kind of impressive and effective, so I'll probably stick with the missiles, and just make one of those bad boys a single engine will be good enough, especially since I want to give him extra shields. And amusingly enough, right now I have worse technology than this ship is using, so 
that's extra effect for me. Because this ship's design is by default using Era 2 weapons, but I don't have to access to Era 2 because I'm not truly in Era 2, I just got there by cheats, aka my Senate. Because a party government is a form of cheating. You had it here first, folks, please don't spread it around. Anyway, let's go, let's go ahead and apply the changes to the design and start making the bastard. So, first smasher on its way, which is going to be helpful. And then I'll probably follow it up with an accelerator or two. And this will be that. Okay, starting on population, Lekin is going to get a Webster, so it can keep its population nice and easy. On Geminos, I'm going to get uh, the effects of interspecies HR. Always going to be well, and as for my loss, I can go for the brain drain drill. But I need my science a lot, so I think I'm just going to go for the Eureka Act instead as soon as I can, which will be... Oh man, actually, my influence gain is really slow. Huh, strange. I could swear that my hero gives me more influence gain than that. But I guess I was wrong. Anyway, population decreasing. I know I'm starving them to death on purpose. And actually, there we go. I made a Webster. Now this place is content. And it looks like my entire... Hmm, my entire up empire is now content for some reason instead of an unhappy. I guess uh, it has upgraded from Endless Space 1. In Endless Space 1 it looked at the overall status of all planets to determine Empire happiness. And here I guess it looks more uh, more than just at which system is happy, which system is unhappy. Instead it looks at the numerical value. Still, I will not dare to let my population... I will... Let me try and say this again. Still, I will purposefully stab my population over here just to make sure that everybody is happier. Because people are happy when people stab, it's a fact. Anyway, let's see. Event ended, so less production for me, but more science for me, which is actually kind of important, and I'm glad to see this. My hero is able to gain a level, which is nice. I'll give him more dust, because I kind of need it at this point in time. Industry production finished, and hey, we're about to get our first flight. Now, unfortunately in this version, yeah, the sound issues still uh, prevail, so... It's not gonna be as amazing of a fight as it was at Gamescom, especially since it's actually a small battle. But nevertheless, we can have our first battle in the series, so let's go ahead and do that. Obviously, I'm gonna watch, you can disable that if you want, but I will not. As for the battle, so the enemy, it's an AI, but if my memory still is right, in this uh, patch, the AI just maybe not randomizes, but uses some strange tactics. I'm Now the scene goes for interlock because of 100% capacity. If it goes for a broadside, it apparently gives them a range advantage over me, which is actually kind of strange, interesting, but I guess it is related to the movement and speed of the ships. Either way, I want to keep a sniper, because my ships are just more effective at long range. Although, no, actually, I'm not using missiles, I'm using medium range. So let's see, if the enemy goes for interlock, they are really good at interval lock, and that would give them a better compatibility and better range. I think I will stick with a sniper because I'm still somewhat effective at the sni at the as a sniper, and the enemy, if he tries to do the same thing, he'll be much worse. And if they try to interlock, which is most uh, likely scenario, then hey, I'll be able to fire them at will. So yeah, let's stick with a sniper, even though evasive would be better, more possibly. But I can also at least get a better critical hit. So let's see what happens. The enemy went for, yeah, for the enemy strength to close in as quickly as possible, which does give me the range advantage over them because I'll be able to fire them quickly because of the way my ships are positioned. All right, good. So a quick look at the bow. I'll enable the scan feature because you will barely be able to see it anyway. Although you might want to see how ships look like, like just enjoy the fight itself. So I'll let you. Although, to be entirely honest, without the fully working sounds, it's not as fun as it could be. I'm really looking forward to the sounds being back the way they were in the past. Assuming they will be, I am I am assuming they will be back uh, in their top form as they were in the past, but who knows. Anyway, right now, they like the mm effect. Yeah, like right now, you just saw this ship, this fire, and you cannot hear those lasers passing by and in the past you definitely were able to hear them which again sound in space i know makes no sense but it makes for some good entertainment space opera action all right so anyway i'm firing at the enemy from a broadside because the enemy is far away they need to get to me because they are close range ships how well am i doing i do want to check this out i can't see it because the camera director is far away i'm actually doing pretty okay in terms of efficiency according to the camera director and the enemy has not been able to fire at me just yet. And it's in fact dying. 
which is very nice again. So yeah, that's the advantage of the, of having a sniper kind of free when the enemy is short range. They are trying to get to me as quickly as possible. They are using the full power of the engines, but they are not using any shields. And, you know, shields are very effective against P weapons that I'm using, and the enemy has none of those. The enemy is using armor exclusively, which ends in their demise. So, that was the size of victory. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It won't be as easy in the version you're gonna play when this game hits early access. Assuming you're gonna play the version that I have access to right now, which, again, is not a guarantee. As always, be careful when buying early access titles because you never know what you're truly gonna get. It's something you always have to keep in mind, right? Okay then. Now I can stay around, uh, on the system and just slowly sap its manpower, and I can't really do anything other than that. But this system is utterly pointless to control. I'd rather try to sap the power of Osula and wait until I have the. Alright, I don't have the, any movement. So I might as well stay here for a turn and then go to Osula and try to sap the power from that system instead. How long until I gain some survival suits? Quite a long time, isn't it? Oh well. I need the interspecies HR. And I'll still be able to win this game easily before 1050. I mean, it's been half of the time I have been given to win the game and uh, yeah, I am gonna win the game. So there is that. Uh, let's guard the system because why not? And my turn. And last video was extremely long. I'm thinking whether or not to make this video shorter and record a quick one after this but then again it's not that long until this game comes out and i want to probably finish this playthrough before this game does come out or at least finish it on the day it does come out so i guess i will just stay here and look at the enemy expanding yeah ai is not the smartest sometimes i guess it will have an extra expansion and ruin its approval then again it's endless ai so it is cheating its approval so it can expand as much as it wants so never mind yay i start my population Yay, my people are happy now, I'm happy as well. Now, unfortunately, it's going to grow back up. And I can't really prevent that, I have too much food. <sighs> oh well. Let's go ahead and queue up my awesome university thingy. After I get a smasher, because I really want a smasher. A smasher is smashing. And a speeding project as well. That's nice, because it costs no... Uh, no... What you might call it? No, that's to maintain it. So I'm gonna go ahead and queue up the spin project. Save it for you, get the spin project, and after you're done with that, well, I'm gonna simply, I don't know, just queue up another smasher. Having two smashers wouldn't be the worst thing ever, but I want my second smasher to be using beams, because if the enemy has all of the ships equipped with just kinetics, those missiles of mine will never be able to reach the enemy, because the enemy will have too much flak. Because keep in mind, like I said, kinetic weapons give you flak defense against missiles, because, well, it makes sense, doesn't it? So let's queue up. An accelerator instead. Okay, so there's that, and I think I can end my turn for the time being. So let's do just that. Okay, I will continue recording until I hit, let's say, a 40 minute mark. But what I truly need is a drink, and I don't have one right now. So, okay, I'm back, and I'll be honest, I was really tempted to actually stop recording and eat something because I'm getting kind of hungry. But at the same time, I realized that, hey, a better idea would be to keep recording and make food a reward for myself for finishing the recording session and doing well. So let's, well, do just that. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and move my ships. Wait, I unlocked the invasion module already? I did. Huh, that was fast. That was really fast, unexpectedly so, in fact. Okay, and let's go ahead and conquer Osula in that case, because, well, there's nothing that is stopping me from doing that. There is an enemy, but there is a thing. There, even if they were guarding the system, I could still invade it, as you can see, with no problems whatsoever. Now, I'm not gonna watch a battle, because this would bug the sound system and I would have to restart the game. Again, alpha is alpha, I know I'm repeating myself, but those kind of things happen, expect them. Also, I just realized I have barely any troops, so... Uh, that would be a problem. I could do something else. Uh, let's see. I could do preemptive bombing. I would destroy some things in the system, sure. Or I could do infiltration, which would be a little bit better for me, perhaps, because I, my troops are actually not that powerful now that I think about it. In fact, my troops are pretty pathetic, and the enemy troops are really, really powerful and scary. So I might just infiltrate the enemy 
let's do that and wait for reinforcements to come. Okay, a minor victory. Yeah, I was able to inflict more damage than I took, which is nice. The enemy was just predicting the system. I didn't destroy anything. I didn't win, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and continue the attack. So this system is being invaded. It will, the invasion will automatically continue on the next turn. In the meantime, however, my fleets can attack the enemy, and it's all right. I know what pupa stands for. All right, I believe that's how you call it, and it's a colonization ship for the Kravis. Makes sense. <clears throat> but uh, it's hard for me to keep a straight face because in certain languages that word also has a different meaning. So let's just kill the guy and uh, not talk about him ever again. Okay, okay, he's dead. <laughs> in fact, recently I actually ate some bugs, so I can also e say that I ate this particular <clears throat> part with a smile on my face, but still, it's rather amusing. At least to me. I have a weird sense of humor, I suppose, but whatever. Anyway, let's send in the reinforcements to Oslo. I'll probably need them to take a system. Actually, I might not need them to take a system, but I'll send the reinforcements anyway, because, hey, it's a smasher, so I want a smasher in my system, okay? Not in my system. Not would be bad to have a smasher in my system. I want him orbiting the enemy system and destroying it. That's a much better idea. Okay, let's go ahead and get this pin project. After that, what this system is good for, I have no idea. I mean, I cannot even colonize this place thing yet because I don't have the tech. I'm about to reach era 2, which will be amusing. In fact, do I need the overclocked engines anymore? I'm devastating the enemy anyway. I don't need them. I thought I would, but I don't. Let's go and uh, wait. Even if I get the auto colonization, I still won't get access to Hyperion just yet. But I still want to have the auto colonization, so this system is less awful, if you don't mind me saying that. So for the time being, let's go ahead and go for the spin project and also research. Let's see, runes might be useful. Maybe a luxury or loot. Yeah, let's go for runes. Let's go ahead and explore them. I think this will be good enough. Or maybe do I want to... Oh wait, Arid? I cannot colonize Arid. Arids are extremely hard to colonize. There is an Atoll and there is Ice. Ice is also hard to colonize. Yeah, so the Atoll is the only way to make the system less awful. Besides, again, Hyperium is Hyperium. Maybe I will actually use it. Maybe not. We'll see. Anyway, anything else I can do? It doesn't look like there is, so I'll just go ahead and end my turn. Nice and easy. Okay, I lost a population somewhere. That's probably good. <laughs> Which is amusing. Another battle. As you can see, the battle continues. I'll continue infiltrating. It works well for me. It allows my infantry to actually stay alive against the more powerful enemy. Because it gives me a buff to health, as you, can, as you saw. So, yep. Yeah. I'm doing okay. Seven enemies killed for just one of my soldiers. Slowly but surely, I'm going to continue the battle on the next turn. I'm not in a hurry, mind you. I really am not. And the enemy does have some slices in the hangars, but they're not using them currently, so that's fine. It looks like I can also, I can also cheese the system by... Attacking again the same turn. Okay, I won't do that again. It's a bug. I'm not supposed to be able to attack twice in the same turn. I was just curious if I can. Looks like I can. Oh well, sorry, it happened. Let's continue the fight. <laughs> uh, well, I don't mind, honestly. It's alpha, so I might as well try to finish this particular PlayStation as quickly as possible and then move on to the official release once it is released. In fact, let's go ahead and conquer the system real quick. Then again, it would lower my dust generation by a ton. I don't want the system, go away. Do whatever you want with it. It will be awful. What I could do is conquer the manufacturing and they probably have an amazing system. Also, I could defend my own systems because there's a counterattack incoming that I didn't notice, which is a little bit awkward now. So let's colonize a planet instead because that's what the smart people do when an attack is coming. I guess, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, as soon as I destroy this colony, then I'll deal with whatever the enemy has to offer. Okay. So, I'm in a new era, that's nice. Uh, ground battle is about to commence. I think I'm just gonna blitz now. Blitzing them would probably... I have a big numerical advantage now. Maybe I can blitz them. Let's try to blitz. I... Wait, well... Oh, okay, okay. So, I conquered the enemy system by attacking them twice, which was rather weird. But then the enemy started attacking my home system, which is about to finish an improvement, so I'd rather keep it. The problem is, I don't think I can keep it. I didn't expect the enemy to counterattack. That's nice. They usually don't. I have 8 infantry, the enemy has 40 of much superior infantry. I can go for local resistance. 
which would also kill off my population, or I could surrender. Surrendering would mean that I would save all of my population in this system. Local resistance, however, would mean that uh, they would probably die. I'm not gonna be able to keep the system either way, will I? I won't. I'm gonna surrender. Hmm. And they were preemptive bombing anyway, but I was able to save my everything as a result. Okay. And that's awkward. <laughs> uh, hey, dear accelerator, you will be needed. Let's keep him in here. Let's start working on some more ships. Quite nice. Actually, this is my home system. The other one was just a nice system, so okay. Let's get some accelerators. Uh, where is my other ship? You go over here. Meet up with those ships. Osulo, at least I gain Osulo, so that's something, I suppose. It's almost depleted, so it's kind of worthless. And it already has exoscience stations. What do you have in terms of improvements? Not much. It has Imperious Bunkers, which actually will be useful for me in this case, because the enemy might want to come back over here. And I don't have all that much population defending the place, so there's that. I'm not gonna make a university in here, that would be stupid. I'm instead gonna go ahead and make some more of an army in here, because why not? Alright, with this, I'm gonna merge those two fleets, they have very little movement left. I could instantly conquer Barney, but Barney would just be a drain on my economy. Still, I kinda wanna do it, just to be an annoyance to the enemy. And it has free population, let's conquer Barney. And let's go ahead and go for preemptive bombing to make sure I get it. Minor victory, I didn't get it. Oh well, I killed the population. Then I can be on my way. Let's retreat for the time being and head into my own system and take it back Nice and easy Okay, my hero. Well, he's hurt really badly. No surprise really and latest political survey things happen But because I lost the system it will increase the uh, support of the militarist faction So hopefully at the start of the next time the militarists will actually gain a presence I hope. I doubt they will, actually, because I know my luck, but that would be really nice. Also, speaking of Senate, now I'll save my influence, because maybe the military will appear. I really hope they will. That would be really nice. Game. Just saying, I want militarists, but I guess I won't get them, probably. Anyway, let's see. Why do I not have access to Era 3? I have the Oracle of Science, and I reached Era 2, so I should gain access to Era 3. Oh no, I do have access to it. Never mind. It just was dark for a second. Okay, so from within Era 3, what do you want? I'm really tempted to showcase some later stuff to you guys, because I know you haven't seen them. For example, I played Casimir Effect. This thing is back. It's not very fancy, but it's back. Or some of the other things you have access to over there. There are tanks. They're just tanks. They are not very fancy, but they are a thing. There's the biggest ship in the game, which I can't actually make, but there is. It's not the biggest ship in the game. For my faction, it is. Instead, I'm just gonna increase the approval of my entire empire, which might be boring, but I kinda need it at the same time though. Hyperium is something that I also kinda want and need. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab Hyperium. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab Hyperium weaponry. Will not be very useful, it's the same. It's actually as powerful as tier 3 weaponry. So why do I need Hyperium again? I don't, do I? Go away, go away, go away. I don't need Hyperium. Go away, you as well. There is no reason for me to get Hyperium anywhere whatsoever. So let's not get it. Instead, let's think for a second. I could improve my trade, which I'm not using anyway. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and improve my approval. I can also improve the Giga class, which I might do. But I'm not doing this just yet. Alright, let's see. I'm guarding my system just so that uh, those guys can kill my ship. Let's disband for now. I might need this ship. And uh, what else, what else, what else is there to do? I don't think there is anything, really. Let's end the turn. Now, I think those guys will safeguard me from the Craver threat, but we are yet to see if that is or is not the case, so I'll go ahead and wait patiently. Also, why is it pending? Stop pending and just let me play. Game. Did I back it out? I may have backed it out. That's a problem. <sighs> I will reload it. Bear it back. Alright, so I have reloaded the game and in result... The enemy didn't actually reach Denimos. Maybe it was on the next stand? No, I'm pretty sure it was on this stand, so I'm mildly confused as to what is happening right now. 
In fact, I'll be entirely honest, I have no idea what is happening right now. I'm just, uh, I just sort of won here and lost, then lose there. But this is the same thing that happened in Endless Legend. If you remember in Endless Legend, whenever you reload, AI starts doing different things. I have no idea what AI did this time around, considering that, you know, it was literally, oh boy. I should not have created a ship, but it has the movement speed to get over to the other system. I could even sell it if I wanted to, but I want to keep it here because, no way, that's cheating. Oh well, I don't care. I will just sell it something else so I can stay afloat. Let's say, by science. Anyway, I don't know what really happened over there, unfortunately. Which is a shame, I wanted to retake my system and prove to you that it was not a problem. But apparently this is not something that I will be able to do. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and I'll finish this then. Or actually I won't even finish this then because I'm afraid that when I reload next then, next time I record, things will get weird again. Instead I'll finish it over here, it's been 40 minutes, long enough for a video. Ladies and gentlemen, Urus Punch, also, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.